moving to oneness. Nourishing curiosity. Embracing differences. Becoming one. Hello everyone, this is Mylene speaking from Germany, inviting you to a wonderful Moving to Oneness show. And today, Denise, sitting in the US, is joining in again after my few <laughs> single ones. And we had so much fun and today I have a feeling it will be bombastic. So, hello Denise, how are you today? Hello, my lane. I am doing fabulous, just doing fabulous. And I am so happy to be on this call with you today. Um, we have a lot to talk about, <laughs> definitely. So let's kind of get into it. Mylene and I were talking earlier before we came on this program and really aligned with what we wanted to uh, talk about today. And it's really about the energy that we are putting out into the world. And as we were talking, it kind of brought to mind something that I have always been interested in, which is the Japanese researcher, Dr. Masuru Emoto, and his experiments on water. And Malina, I told you a little bit about this. We are, we're talking about how he did water experiments to see if the vibration of what we put toward that water could change its molecular structure. And that's what he, it, he did. I mean, we look at it and we see that our planet, even our body, is 70% water. And depending on what type of energy we put out there toward this water within ourselves or within our planet is exactly what we'll create. And I love this because, as we know, everything in our world is energy and it's vibrational. So what are we wanting to put out there in the way of vibration today? Oh, yes, the water. We have so much of water on this earth, right? And in, in all in, in, in the air, in, in, in the ground, under the mountains, within us, in lakes, in oceans. And we touch it every single day if we drink it or we bathe in it. Definitely. I mean, water is the source of our life. I mean, think about it. When um, we get cut off from maybe a food supply or something like that, um, as long as we have water, we can last for a much longer time. <laughs> and as probably you've seen, even we have more creative thoughts when we're bathing or showering. It is the water essence that gives us life. Definitely. And so I want to talk a little bit more about Dr. Emoto's experiments that he did. Because he did, I mean, his book is called The Message of Water. And what he did was he would um, align his own vibration of music, thoughts, words, feelings, dance, any type of vibration in the most positive way and direct it specifically at water molecules. And he would look at the difference between the two, you know, of one of which he kept saying in a glass of water, he'd go, I love you. You are so beautiful. You make me feel so good. This is a beautiful thing whom you are. Um, and then to another glass of water where he would not have his positive words. You know, you disgust me. You're ugly. Um, why don't you go away? And then he would scientifically look at that water to see the impact that his energy and vibration had toward it. And as you can imagine, the more positive words, thoughts, even music, loving, kind music, uh, would have a molecular structure that had it bursting out almost like a snowflake, you know, and that brightness and whiteness and everything along those lines of light on the one that had the most positive vibration to it. And on the other glass of water, those molecules that had ugliness, negative energy uh, applied to it, 
would be shrinking and it had a brownness to it and a negativity. It was like going into a dark hole. Um, And I look at this and I think, wow, think about what we do in our own life. We have that type of vibration pointed inward to ourselves or even outward to others. Can we make a difference based on this type of vibrational energy? Since our bodies are pretty much 70% made of water. Yeah. I love the whole idea of of water. Uh, you know, I also program water. Sometimes I let water be programmed by the sun. Sometimes I lay bottles of water into the full moon. And if you leave it there for five hours, it, it takes in the beautiful energy, even if it's cloudy. And it is a life force, right? If, so if it's the sun, it is, takes the life energy in the water. Sometimes I draw just like a, for myself, I had one a, a spiral I had drawn and I wrote gratitude on love on it in every language that I knew. Yeah, to program the water for the whole family. Sometimes when I had uh, did shamanic uh, journeys and I came back with symbols, I would draw those down and put my glass of water or my water bottle on it and program it. I even painted my cups or uh, glass bottles with symbols that arose, right? I bring the wisdom yeah. because in the way we, we can feed ourselves with our own wisdom, that's important, right? So everyone, you have time now. Draw at home maybe a symbol, whatever your hand creates. Or maybe it is a beautiful landscape, a photograph or image that you see. Put your water glass, put your water bottle on it, or maybe paste it onto a bottle. Here in Germany, we have a a company that has uh, bottles live water, water that has seen the sunlight. And they have always this uh, beautiful image of uh, the spring itself on the bottle, so we can see where the water comes from. How else can you program? You can take a water bottle. I did that uh, a long time ago when I was working with the Koreans together. You you put uh, your hands around the water bottle and you send in energy, healing energy uh, for loved one. Or maybe we have now the elderly that or uh, parents or you have an aunt, whoever you can think of, and you want to send them healing good vibes. Yes, meditate yes, I with love that bottle that. in your hand. Yes, meditate with that bottle in your hand. And that bottle will get warmer. The water will get warmer. And you can really see how suddenly you have water. Yeah, because it gets hot, the water drops are inside. So you can see that even your intention, your energy, your thought, uh, your vision for this person, this healing you're sending in, is working. So we were holding it for 45 minutes up in the air. That was a little was really interesting but at that time I did it for my mother and oh. you can send it but I was there in Arizona my mom in Germany so I couldn't send it but what I did then I used that healing water walked into the landscape found a beautiful plant it was and I poured that water with intention onto the plant to send it to my mother mm. I love that. See, everything is a vibrational energy. And in today's world and what we're going through, everything may feel a tad frightened, a little frightening right now, because the energy that is being put out there is somewhat of a dip, a dip and not as positive as what we would like it. I mean, we are human. We're going through some very difficult times Uh, at this moment, where we're being asked to social distance, where we're being asked to stay home, where we're being asked to be mindful of others, and also kind of being asked to wash our hands. And Mm. I want to bring this in because, you know, washing our hands, we do that. We've always done that. At this time, 
what they're asking us to do is to do it with intent. Mm, And this is where, yeah, this is where we can really begin a healing process, not just for ourselves. We can also do it for the world and for everyone else around us. So I think about it this way. I look at it and I go, okay, so I'm going to count in my head very, very slowly the 20 seconds that they want us to be intentional about washing our hands. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to send loving, healing, compassionate thoughts, energy, joy, excitement into that water and that process of washing my hands. Because I know with that, that that energy that's touching me Mm. is also touching others. And it just floats through the air of whomever and however far I can send it out. And that's what we want to do, guys. We want to be intentional about not just as they're telling us to do to wash our hands, but on our thoughts and what we're putting out into the world whether it's through our conversations with people, it's, you know, phone calls, video chats, loved ones that are around us, or even on social media. We want to be able to hold the energy of pure love. Because right now, that's exactly where we want to be. It's that law of attraction of a universal law. Whatever we are thinking about and feeling within our body, we are emitting out to the world and creating our lives. So it's with that pure thought, the love, the generosity, the compassion, the being of service, that we can find the joy and excitement of what's going on right now with us. And I will tell you, it's normal. If you dip down into fear or scarcity, just create the awareness of when you go into it and then stop and pause and say, what can I do to shift this one moment, this moment and my thought to something more positive? Where's the silver lining in all of this? And Mylene, as we're talking about this space, this time that we're in, in which to create And even with sending intentional thoughts through our body, through the water and the essence of everything in the air and our oceans and our planet, I look at, as we've been allowed to have this space and time to review, to reset, to relax into it, of how much healing is going on with Mother Earth. I mean, we're seeing it. We're seeing it in the news of the waters clearing and becoming clear blue. And you can see fishes and dolphins and and swans within the Venice canals. Um, You can see over China. You can really see the sky. You can see the cities and not the smog and the pollution. This is so fascinating. We can see how quick transformation uh, can happen uh, if there is love intention and yes everyone it's Denise said so beautiful just wash your hands with love and that love for you is the love for everyone else in the same moment you don't even have to meditate for a long time the water that you touch takes part of you into the world and shares it with everyone that fits <laughs> Our topic, right? We're moving to oneness because this drop, it doesn't matter where it has come down that you are touching, will go far, far, far away from you again. And with, mm, yes, right? We, and, and I love that we don't know where it's going to go and who's going to feel it and how it will impact the next person. I, I, that's something that, uh, is so fascinating and it brings healing because the other person can feel it right away and and uh, Denise you said also so beautiful the world changes so quickly it goes back into balance very fast when it has has the opportunity we ourselves our body goes quickly 
in into harmony it finds its way if we give it the opportunity if we listen and we observe so observe mm. how you are today and how you're reacting and maybe you have noticed the last few days uh, the energy in the air in around you on the ground is changing people are becoming soft and gentle Yes, right? yes. And that's what we want to continue. Definitely. Because as we hold positive thoughts, love, compassion, that energy, the joy, the harmony with everything, having that type of vibration within ourselves, then that builds our muscle for being stronger in vibrational change and not seeing it as something negative, but seeing it as something extremely positive and exciting in our lives. And I know a lot of people are going to go, exciting? Oh my gosh, Mylene, Denise, these aren't exciting <laughs> times. These are a little scary. <laughs> yeah, it, it's because we're not used to live in the unexpected. Yeah, our whole world is set up to live plant. And it was the last 2000 years we've been in a world where everything was dictated, uh, we were put into fear. And I see a beauty of a restructuring, a, a memory of everyone after a few days. I don't know if you can ever go back to what you've been before. It's like this muscle, mem the cells change. And uh, if you get healing, sometimes the body workers will know very uh, precisely what I'm speaking about, right? If you shift something in within the body, the body will notice that it's easier. It has facility. No, that's not the word, but uh, that it works yeah. more gentle, that there's less energy needed. So yes. this is going to happen to many, many people and will you become more creative. Many of you wanted out there, I think, time for yourself to look within who are you, to have the opportunity to look again at your partner, at your child, at your friend and your surrounding. Where are you at the moment? Why are you at a certain spot in the world now? I think this is also fascinating and feel loved by the area, the landscape you are in. Mm. We yes, neglect yes. that sometimes. Oh, we do. We do. And it's kind of like we, it's like going to an even um, more practical level of what you said. It's like once we learn something, and that's what we're doing now, we can't unlearn it. You know, we can't unlearn how to walk. It's always deep inside of us. We can't unlearn how to talk. Events could happen that would cause us not to be able to walk or talk at times, but yet we can remember that function, that ability. And that's what we're going through now with these changing times, because guys, these are changing times. Sometimes people want to resist change, and that's where they stay stuck in fear, scarcity, sometimes anger with everything. I look back on, I used to live in Houston, Texas, and I was there at the time Hurricane Ike came through. Pretty much devastated Galveston, and it totally shut down Houston, Texas. Was flooded beyond belief to where the systems, the technological systems, we didn't have electricity, we didn't have gas, we didn't have internet, we didn't have anything because we were practically underwater. And it took months in which to get the systems back up. The water receded, we were cleansed, and yet we, we were in the energy in the beginning of being compassionate and having love. But as time wore on, we wanted to go back to what we had before with all of our comfort and all of our conveniences. And I can remember going out to where there was no electricity on the road. So you didn't have uh, your lights going, your red light, green light, yellow light, whatever, on traffic on a four-way stop. And at first, people would do the compassionate thing of what they were to do is to allow someone else to go through, to, to have that compassion, to say, you're here, you go, then I'll go, you go, then I'll go. 
at, but as the weeks wore on and we still weren't quite there, people became quite impatient. And they would just say, no, I'm here, I'm going. I don't care about anyone else. And I want to say that that was not being in a compassionate nature. And it was a little fearful to feel that others felt more privileged. And what we want to do from this experience, because this experience is changing our world for the better, is to stay aware, consciously aware, of what is going on within our thoughts, within our feelings, within our behaviors and our actions. We can sit back and we can judge and we can criticize and we can feel sorry for ourselves, or we can choose to see the positivity and the exciting changes that are coming toward more communion, toward more compassion, toward more unity, and moving to oneness, which is why Mylene and I started this and started talking about it months ago with this group, with this podcast, with this energy of basically embracing that we as one can create a different world, one of gentleness, of compassion, of love, of always being enough for everything, for everybody, no matter what. That's so beautiful. You know, Marita and Julie out of our group, uh, Moving to Oneness on Facebook uh, group, everyone, if you can, do join that group and, and, and bring your questions. We're asking us, and, and I think, Denise, we, we covered all those topics instinctively before me reading now those questions. You know, if the comp speaking about compassion, bringing energy to that for all humanity, and I'll add even to everything existing out there. And Julie was asking for some healing energy so everyone can be more peaceful. And I think if we look outside, everyone will feel the peace and how the support is and people are shifting and changing. And it'll take some time, be patient and give people the, the time to, to balance Right to shift from one extreme into the other until they find uh, themselves and then they can feel their own joy because it's something new. They have to get used to it. So many of mm -hmm. you who are listening, you're already in a very high vibrating state. So let us bring, and I'm going to bring a song to embrace what is arising now and I think a few weeks someone has said that adventure that was coming and we did a song for that and he's pretty spooky but our group is always a little ahead right but let's it. just exactly. zone in and open your hearts sit down for a moment lie down and listen to how you've loved even though whatever is going on and Go with the flow, open up, open up hard. We spoke, had that episode where you opened the heart, listen to that if you want again, and feel that you are loved, and feel that you're loved by all others around you, and that you are loved by yourself. Bring a song just for that, for you and everyone out there, so we can move to oneness together in a way we could not have fathomed any moment prior than to this moment. Mamma, na 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 na, 
while singing came and Amanda also wrote in a deep healing this was a fun exciting tones to bring lightness into this situation but at the same time we can let arise whatever is in your body out of you let it flow and in a playful way create new ways you live every moment and new ways how you're going to be together with the people that are surrounding you now and in the future <laughs> yes i love that and think about it like this guys to raise your vibration move your body put on some music dance and dance. just Sing it out. Dance yep. it out. It'll be great. <laughs> yes. Oh, wonderful, everyone. Wonderful. Definitely. Denise, that we have each other and everyone that listens. You all do Thank such you, beautiful work. Yes. Thank you, Mylene. And to everyone, let's move to oneness.